Hi everyone, welcome to Active Self Protection. We are delighted that you're here today for today's evidence-based defensive lesson. I am ASP President John Correa. And I am Stephanie Widener, ASP CEO. Welcome to Saturday's lesson. Today's episode is supported by DroneQuote, a veteran-owned business that's a champion for homeowners in the solar and roofing world. These guys are all about honesty, integrity, and doing what's right for the customer. They get you multiple quotes from top installers backed by a 30-year warranty. They even use drones to inspect your roof before and after installation to hold installers accountable. If you value straight answers and want an advocate on your side, don't go solar without DroneQuote, your dedicated homeowner advocates for solar installations nationwide. Hit the link in the description to find out more. Video starts here in the middle of this one. If you go read the news story I've linked in the description, this one started at like City Hall with some kind of a union meeting or vote or something like that. And the dude that we're gonna see here has started throwing giant rocks through car windows. Uh, I don't think occupied cars, I think parked cars. But now he's throwing rocks through windows of houses and just walking down the block near the river. And these guys are following him. My guess would be from that union meeting kind of at a distance, and then what's gonna happen here is he's gonna pick up a lot bigger rocks and start throwing them through windows. We do have audio of what happens from here. It might be one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time on the channel. Let's listen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck, watch out. When asked for a statement afterwards, our perp said, uh, Cops showed up actually relatively quickly after this. You could have heard them in the background. But then they had to wait for the fire department to get the, the golf cart off of him in order to get him into custody. Uh, he is facing some serious charges on this one. He did live through this. Uh, his ego didn't, though. You know, Steph, we hear in the comments that people hate YouTube's algorithms, and, you know, we do have a solution for that. Yeah, we hear all the time people want a place where they can see what they want to see and not depend on an algorithm to serve them something or something being censored by another company they want to have control. So if that is you, come check us out at on our app, Asp Unlimited. You can check it out. Link's in the description. This is one of those weird ones, Steph. I, I must say, I chuckled pretty hard the first time that I saw this one. But I, I see that these guys that are kind of watching at a distance, I'm okay with, right? They, they're not getting in the danger zone. They're just kind of seeing, do I have to intervene? Maybe not. But I, I do think here, this guy starts throwing rocks at cars and people like big rocks and hurting stuff. Just somebody with an OC spray, just getting within 15 feet of the guy, if you got maybe a Mark III or 10 feet, if you got one of the regular you know, uh, pocket units and blessing this guy with the hot sauce, would have probably ended this very quickly. Yeah, and we see so many videos where, where that's the case. I guess it just makes me continue to argue more and more strongly that, that you really should be wearing a carrying a quality OC because it can solve so many problems. It really can. And, and again, as Chuck Haggard says, having something between a harsh word and a gun is a good thing. Although, once he starts throwing rocks through uh, houses here, you know, that starts putting people inside the home at risk of death or great bodily harm. And so that starts to make justification quite an issue here, right? Uh, and, and you can hear, okay, we've called the cops, they're on the way. And I like that these guys kind of pump the brakes a little bit. Do I have to use deadly force on this guy right now? And I don't know if anybody can, but maybe if one of these guys here is like, hey, he doesn't have any rocks in his hands right now and I'm gonna go Terry Tate this guy and tackle him. Okay, fine, but now I'm in a fist fight with him. And so, you know, now I'm gonna have to deal with this guy and his fist fighting problems. And then here pretty quick is when things get really out of hand. So he starts picking up these big rocks and throwing them through the window of a house that I, I think this is what we'd call an occupied dwelling, right? That, that whether someone's home or not, this is an occupied dwelling. And throwing a rock that big into an occupied dwelling creates a significant risk of death or great bodily harm to whoever's in that home. 
And I think this has escalated this problem to deadly force, Steph. Uh, yeah, I certainly agree. I mean, we know now with 2020 hindsight, he didn't hurt anyone, but he doesn't know who's on the other side. He, he can't see in there. If there were a child on the other side of it, someone sleeping that that rock would hit their head. I mean, he doesn't know what he's not thinking and he's putting people, again, at risk of, of death or great bodily harm, serious bodily injury. So uh, the ability to intervene here and do something to stop this before someone gets seriously hurt is is a moral good. I also think if somebody had an OC spray on them, right? I, I wouldn't go hand to hand necessarily with this guy. I mean, you might if, you, if you've got high level of fighting skills, but if you got an OC spray, you get within 12 feet, he's not gonna throw that thing at you so fast that it's gonna knock you over uh, unless you are uh, physically compromised, right? So you probably can get in there, OC him and get the heck out of there before he can uh, hurt you with a rock as long as maybe he just yeeted a rock, now I can go in there and do that. So that's why I just, I, I, I'm just saying again, have something between a harsh word and a gun. A good OC spray can solve a problem like this very, very quickly. Now, I don't know that anybody had a gun here. Had they shot this guy right here? I don't have any problems with it. But what we do have is the Lone Ranger riding in on his trusty steed, Hi-Ho Silver. And, and I think this is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Because, I mean, the bright yellow shirt makes him look like a traffic cone. I mean, obviously he's a big dude, but you know what? He was willing and able to act when no one else is. So, you know what? The golf cart ranger here, hats, hats off to you, bro. You know, what did they say? I am the weapon, all else are tools. And he found what was, what was available to him. Like you say, I don't know that he had OC. I don't know that he had a gun. Even with a gun, I think that this is a fully justified use of force. That said, the optics can be a little rough if it's like guy throwing rocks, you shoot him. It's not necessarily something I would love to have to argue out in the court of the public opinion if I could avoid it. And this guy avoided it by just, um, yeah, with the golf cart. <laughs> The Fred Flintstone defense, as we are gonna say. He, uh, he just got in his car and beep, beep, here we go. I do think it's justified conduct. I think that it's okay. You know, what he did here is, is justifiable use of deadly force. Recognize, running somebody over with a golf cart, is this highly likely to put this guy in the hospital? Absolutely it is, he's gonna break bones. They definitely took him to the hospital. What's the chances he's gonna have lacerations, broken bones, those kinds of things, putting him under the wheels of the cart pretty good and so we would consider this the use of deadly force but once we are in the realm of deadly force is justified i don't care what deadly force it is your you know your car a gun uh, a baseball bat a golf cart i mean whatever you've got available it, it's it's about why you did the thing and i think that is uh perfectly justified i also think stephanie as soon as he went under the wheels our perp said he was sorry and, and we're like, yeah, friend, you're gonna be sorry. And if you go read the news story, they had to wait for the fire department to get there. So he had to stay under the wheels of this golf cart for a significant amount of time until the cops could say the scene was safe and the, the, you know, uh, the hose draggers could show up and the, and the firemen, a bunch of big strong dudes could get this golf cart off him. And that's a little bit of poetic justice because they say stupid should hurt and in this case it did. It certainly did. You know, and again, this isn't about him breaking up the breaking the windows and everything. This is about defending the lives of people that could have been inside. He was putting people at risk. We wouldn't want to be running people over with golf carts just to save some broken windows of cars or anything. But I think this guy really thought through what was available to him and, and made a great decision to cover his asp.